all right, I think I did well there in terms of my position. I actually did like talking to Paul um, uh, a good a good amount. That guy was so dumb. Well, he set it up front, and I think it's true. I think he has a very strong emotional attachment to a couple of the positions here. I mean, we all do, right? But, you know, no, I, I, I enjoyed the conversation a lot. That was fun. Thanks to that closing, Vosh. I agree. He was very human in his approach to stuff. Yeah, so, okay, I've said this before, but, like, the final stage of fascist engagement in terms of, like, disagreeing with other people is knowing dishonesty. And a lot of people who are fascist, who debate online, are in that position. Um, but with Paul, my man's actually a guy, uh, like, a, a person, you know? One of my goals on this channel is... I have several, but... It's to address the biggest problem that I think I am capable of addressing, even just a little bit. And that problem is that everyone seems to hate each other. And when I saw this clip from Vosh, I thought, this doesn't make any sense. Why would someone who is a, a supposedly a narcissistic, sociopathic, evil person, according to some, why would he push back against his own audience to defend someone who just spent the last three hours publicly insulting him in a lot of ways and pushing back against everything he said, and also putting forward ideas that him and his audience would regard as fascistic. He's either stupid, which obviously isn't the case, or he is just being kind to a fellow white supremacist, which is what FD Signifier would say. But until FD Signifier actually has a conversation with me and just doesn't leave comments on my videos, I cannot in good faith take that criticism seriously. Or maybe Vosh actually is just a regular human being who deserves to have some level of empathy and respect, and also to have the genuine good that he does get acknowledged, especially by those people who criticize him. You give a lot of, like, actually good practical advice to a lot of, um, I think, like, teenagers and whatnot who, you know, are socially awkward or struggle or whatnot. Listen, you have to understand, there's no such thing as a as a, a person who doesn't experience awkward conversations. There is nobody so charismatic that they don't have trouble with that. People literally insult him and say, oh, well, he's autistic and he's got his army of teenage autists. It's like, okay, well, if that's the case, how can you honestly deny that, you know, him giving what may seem like obvious advice to a lot of people, but articulating useful social advice to people who may struggle socially. Like, if you can't understand how that's a good thing, then you're blind. This is the conversational gap. Your thoughts are locked away inside of your skull. Nobody can see them and nobody ever will. The best you can do is express them through vocal or physical communication. That's it. This is not a mechanism for seamless interaction making. It's gonna cause problems. Um, for everyone, you know? You're just trying to make it as good as you can. And I think it's really just dumb that there's so many people who will call Vosh evil and all these different things, when, ironically, because we were debating Jordan Peterson, those people seem to not understand that if you think other people are capable of evil or are evil in a way that you're not, that makes you naive. Jung said very clearly that the first step to enlightenment is the encounter with the shadow. And what he meant by that was, Everything horrible that human beings have done was done by human beings, and you're one of them. And I don't think, and this is something I did learn from Jung, is that you cannot be a good person until you know how much evil you contain within you. It is not possible. So the reason I preface this video with all that is because there is a difference between calling someone evil and holding them accountable for the consequences of their actions. And I believe... I don't think Vosh is innocent by any stretch of the imagination. I'm, I've made plenty of videos suggesting quite the opposite. I, I honestly think, for example, and I don't have any way to prove this, but I believe that him being so overly confident and I think arrogant in his beliefs, because he hasn't done the research to the degree that it's necessary, he's probably convinced some non-zero number of people in his audience who are gender dysphoric and struggling with their identity, which by his own admission, a huge chunk of that audience is, some proportion of those people probably went through gender reassignment surgery, for example, or some medical transition, and are going to regret it. And I think he will eventually reap what he sows in that regard. But if you believe that, then the question is, what do you do about it? Do you just call him names and shit and isolate him and whatnot, or try to open up a path of empathy and conversation? I did not want to get into a point where I was trying to dunk on him by pulling up clips of things he said just to post it on Twitter or something like that. But I specifically went in, again, trying to acknowledge the real good that I think he has done. Whether that outweighs the bad is a open question, and I honestly 
don't know if it does. And look, there's no playbook for any of this shit. I don't know what I'm doing in a lot of ways. My my heart, by the way, was beating so much at the beginning. You can't tell, I don't think, but I could tell on my screen. You could see my shirt beating. I was about to have a panic attack. I was like four-fifths of the way there to, to have a panic attack, which is just funny. I would have liked to have gone a little bit more in-depth, specifically on cultural Marxism and moral anti-realism. I had notes specifically on that, ready to go. But to be honest, at the end of the day, this last clip from the end of the Q&A session, which is not on the video I posted on my channel, but the total video. To me, this is where the real win is. So good luck, Godspeed, and I'll leave you with this. So with that, what I would say is, I would have a beer with either of you. Okay. Okay. I appreciate that. Vosh, would you like to shout your channel out real quick? That and something else. Uh, I'm Vosh. You can find me at Vosh, uh, Voshing. Uh, but also, I enjoyed the convo very much, Paul. Um, you know, we, we obviously disagree on a lot. And I, I'll just leave it at that. We disagree on a lot. But you are a human being. A lot of these conversations I have, you know, I, I'm talking with these these giggling frenetic messes who know they're lying. They know they're lying when they talk to me. They don't care. Yeah, I've seen it. Yeah, you obviously care. You care enough to emote. You care enough to engage. I really appreciate that. Sincerely, I do. It, it means a lot. You know, I, 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 so much. I the harder and harder to find debates where it seems like both people actually give a shit about the positions they're coming to the table with. So yeah, uh, I hope you have a wonderful Thank day. You. I hope both of you have a wonderful day, and I appreciate yeah, the time. Too, man.